Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm continuing my flight in the SR-71 Blackbird taking off this time from St. John's International in Newfoundland and headed towards hopefully London and so we are crossing the Atlantic obviously I'm not going to show you much of that particular trip I'll show you more about what we do once we get across the Atlantic and uh, but I will give you some status reports as we go along, especially if for some reason I think that uh, we, we're having issues. Obviously I'll show that. That's always fun. Anyway, we're on uh, runway 11 and so we are headed east and I've got the latitude and longitude up here so I'll primarily be using that to navigate because the map that we have, while wonderful, uh, doesn't extend very far so it's really hard to uh, plan out a long journey like one across the Atlantic using this and of course I'm not bothering with uh, air traffic control or anything like that and it should be alright so here we go taking off with the SR-71 once again this time at night uh, we have uh, spent some time in Newfoundland we are taking off um, I think it's hold on I don't trust that clock so let me just take a look um, 248 local time which is 518 UTC and my hope is that it will be daylight once we get there and that's why I've sort of spent a little bit extra time in Newfoundland. Alright, I don't know if I've got that quite right. Hopefully there'll be some light once we get over to England. Here we go. Actually, I would like some light once we get over Ireland just so we can take a look around. But, you know. Best laid plans. It doesn't seem like the lights external lights have any sort of um, key binding right now. I'll have to figure out exactly what lights I want to... I mean obviously we need nav lights and beacon lights but right now we're super stealthy. We're being very sneaky about taking off here which is fine. We can deal with that. Come on. There we go. Okay, we are off. Let's just go straight east for now until I uh, figure out more detailed plans. Um, there are some lights outside, but not much to see really. Basically, I'll be in the cockpit view for most of the way. And we really don't need to be going this fast. I also don't need to be pushing it so so much. Uh, I gotta watch out for my G-forces. Without any reference outside, sometimes you don't get a sense of how much you're pushing the aircraft. Okay, so uh, we're at 31,000 feet and now I'm gonna turn to 60 degrees and that will change as we go along uh, both because of mag magnetic variation and because we're flying a sort of great circle route to uh, London uh oh I think it thinks I'm stalling hmm okay well we are going a little bit slow here and that's because I wanted to preserve fuel the faster you go the more you consume because there's the ramjet aspect of all this so we've sort of done a slow climb here but let's try and speed up to past Mach 1 now so once again I am completely controlling this there is not gonna be any autopilot it's gonna be a little bit tedious in this particular flight this is probably the most tedious flight that I intend to make as far as just it being dark nothing to see and you know, otherwise, crossing the Pacific, you can do it across the Bering Strait, and so there's land masses to take a look at and everything. According to the plot, our total distance for this trip is actually just 1,986 nautical miles, so that's pretty good. I mean, that's not that, that's not as bad as it could be. Once we reach our destination, I'll plot the distance between New York and London and then we will try and judge whether the SR-71 could have done that the way I fly it. In real life it probably could have. 
but we'll just see based on the way I fly. It is much nicer hitting east than west. West will always take you longer, especially at these latitudes because of the wind patterns. Uh, we are going with the winds here and the jet stream and everything. And going in the opposite direction, heading west, we would be heading against the wind patterns and therefore going slower, substantially. And much less fuel efficient. If we take a look at the map, it shows the wind at 12,000 feet. Here's the wind at 34,000 feet. And you can see we're going right with the wind. And uh, it's 85 knots. Up there it's 111 knots. So it's pretty substantial. I mean, uh, and that's 34,000 feet. It's uh, faster even higher in the stratosphere. But you can tell that for an airliner which goes like 500, 600 knots ground speed, um, that's a significant difference. And by the way, the number indicates where it's coming from, not where it's going. So it's a westerly wind. Okay, we are at 60,000 feet, uh, nearly Mach 3, Mach 2.95 and climbing. I'll see whether 80,000 feet is doable and better than 60,000 feet as far as fuel consumption should be. Well, I'm having uh, real trouble going up to 80,000 feet and maintaining Mach 3 at the same time. In fact, as we go along, it's harder to maintain even like Mach 2.8. Well, right now we're at Mach 2.5 and we've got two hours of fuel. It probably wouldn't be too bad to level off here. Um, our ground speed is going down. We could have a ground speed of 1,900. Right now we're below 1,500, so we're going relatively slowly. Let me just level off here. I think this is sufficiently efficient. Still, even though we have negative vertical speed, the ground speed is going down. That's not great. Well, I have to say, the situation is getting a little bit worrisome because now we're down to Mach 2.2 at 63,000 feet, and we're going down. We're not actually going up here. Let me try and level out. But yeah, I I've been through this before. I mean, I'm not surprised that uh, we've got this sort of situation. I, I just wonder why exactly. I'm at full throttle. Let me just pulse that a bit. And I'm at full throttle, Mach 2.1, going down still, 62,000 feet. Normally this would be a shoe-in for Mach 3, but uh, our ground speed is continually going down. Taking a look at where we're at, I mean, it's not, we're, we're definitely going to make it. That's not a problem here. We're at 38 degrees, negative 38 degrees, I mean. And we started out at 52-ish, uh, so... We're, we're basically a quarter of the way through. Mm, I don't want to go below Mach 2. Let's, let's go down, let's go down. Interestingly, the clock definitely does seem to automatically adjust to local time. I just saw a hop between uh, pointing the hour hand at 3 and pointing the hour hand at 4. Okay, we're back to Mach 3 with an 1800 knot ground speed. So, all is well for now, but, uh, geez, it seems hard to get to a higher altitude than this and still maintain velocity. Well, at least for me. I'm sure there is a good way to do it, but obviously the way I was doing it was not very good. Gotta try and coax it back to 60,000 feet at least. Okay, well, at this point, I'm just worried about arriving a little early. Uh, we are at 22 degrees west longitude right now, and of course uh, London is just past zero degrees. It's at um, uh, about 15 minutes west, so or no, it's basically at zero degrees. So yeah, and we are currently at six o'clock, 6:10 local time. 
So I'm wondering if we're going to get Dawn when we hit England. And again, preferably I would have liked it when we hit Ireland instead so that we could see Ireland properly, but yeah. Doubtful right now that that's going to work out because, frankly, we're just going too fast. I could slow down, but that's less efficient. Also gives me less time to, like, explore Europe. Now, during the live streams, when I previously started out this flight and ended up in Moscow and then continue past Moscow, I went from uh, London to Copenhagen to Stockholm to Helsinki and then to Moscow. Uh, well, I think I flew over Paris as well, but I didn't land there. Uh, I think I want to go more southerly this time, so I'll be going uh, Paris, uh, probably Switzerland, we've got some good scenery of the Alps hopefully, Venice, and then down to Athens. Though, maybe we should do something around Germany. Maybe Paris, then... Um, May Frank, well, Frankfurt's a little bit far north. Uh, May around the more industrial area of uh, West Germany, and then south to Switzerland. Trouble is, there's so many cities in Europe that I would like to hit, but this thing has a turning radius of some countries. So, I mean, it's like uh, if if you are missing Belgium and you need to turn around and try and fly over Belgium. This thing could make a big circle around Belgium and never hit it. So, at full speed, obviously. So, that's a little bit of a downside. It's tough to really aim at anything in Europe if you haven't planned ahead with something so fast. Obviously, uh, in later flights with different aircraft, I will be more precise about it. Alright, I see the coast of Ireland on the map here. We probably need to go further south. We're a bit far north now. Assuming that's the part I think it is. Maybe it would be prudent to slow down at this point. Let me see, how far off are we right now? Uh, still 400 nautical miles, but even even at slower speeds, we'll probably make that very easily. And it's, uh, it says it's 7.23 local time. I'm surprised the sun hasn't risen yet. We've crossed a few time zones, obviously. Uh, flight time hasn't been too long. We're probably over an hour now. Okay, so there's a Kerry Beacon, and this is Raf Kool. And that down there, Cork. Well, there's the semblance of light down there, but that's, that's a lie, actually. I don't understand that particular effect in X-Plane, but... It is definitely not lighter down there than it is up here. Well, given the darkness, I'm not going to aim for Dublin, which is a little bit further north than our current track. We'll just give that a miss for now. Interesting divergence on the winds here. We see these going this way, and these going that way. There must be some kind of front, I guess? I, I'm not entirely sure about weather patterns. Okay, well, uh, we are now headed across St. George's Channel over to Wales. And then we'll be following the coast of the Bristol Channel and then uh, heading for London. So, actually, I hear there's going to be a new update to explain, and we're going to get some more scenery at London. So, that's going to be really good. We're going to have proper scenery objects, not just the photo, you know, I've got the ground texture photo scenery, but not proper buildings. We're lacking the proper buildings, so it'll be nice to get uh, proper buildings for London. Now that's part of X-Plane 11.10, the version. The one I'm currently flying in right now is 11.05. They say uh, 
I, I, apparently they were the ones who added the Las Vegas scenery. I thought it was a mod I had downloaded, but apparently that was just part of the game, the buildings around Las Vegas. And uh, they're going to add 534 airports and new autogen. We saw the autogen at uh, New York and it was a little bit repetitive, so hopefully the new autogen they'll add some more buildings to make it a little bit less repetitive. And they're going to add more objects to design with, though there are plenty of those available for free on the website as packs. But anyway, it uh, should be a good update. I'm glad they're updating it. Always nice to get a little update like this. Well, we're over to Bristol Channel, but further south than I intended. And there seems to be some lag. I... This is more than just a downloading lag. I bet this is a sun coming out lag. Maybe, hopefully. Oh, and there's a sign of dawn right there. We can see a little hue there. Well, we can definitely see airports through the haze. The dawn is slow in coming here. The start of dawn, uh, the frame rates went down to like 6 per second. Now they're going like 40 per second. Not entirely sure the logic of all this, but okay. Once we can see all of the scenery, I bet it's going to be worse. But then again, we're going slow. I mean, for the SR-71, we're going slow. We, we've passed uh, the photo scenery at much higher velocities than this. So maybe, maybe at these sorts of speeds, this is going to be the frame rate. We'll see. 31,000 feet below Mach 1 now. And we're just sort of looking for London, hopefully in full daylight. I'm deliberately going slow, well, slower than I could be going in order to make sure of that. Well, I might just have to land in this whole situation. At least we can see the runways and everything. Actually, it's far less distracting like this when the runways are so clear and the other scenery is not. So, yeah, could definitely land like this. And then uh, take the break that simulates refueling and then take off again to do the tour of London. And neighboring environs. Maybe we'll just go with that. It's best to fly from the east to the west because then the sun's not going to be in my eye just in case it does decide to pop out. Well, there's no question about it. Dawn is a very subtle thing in X-Plane 11. You can see some detail on the ground there. We're currently only at 10,000 feet and going very fast still, actually. But below Mach 1. So, at least there's that. But there's like this wall right about here, where we go from being able to see some stuff on the ground to like, glare. At least uh, there's a semblance of a sun coming out there. Okay, so we're leveling out over to Thames. You can see London City Airport there. That's the city center. Let's take it from outside. Maybe we can get some sort of a look out here. There's the winding river, barely visible. So as the river winds about, this is the heart of London. You can see Millennium Dome, I think, there. And unfortunately, we can't see too many sights, but the river's winding like this. Well, uh, oh, there we go, there we go. It's just rendering in now. Okie dokie. Let's take it from the cockpit view, then. Okay, hello citizens of London and the vicinity. We are, oh, I'm a little bit further off to this side than I thought. We are landing at your wonderful airport. Okay, just get a little bit further to the right here. Okay.
Okay. Oh, 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 oh. There's a bit of a odd feel here. Okay, but we're down. And brakes on. And just in case, stroke shoot. Or drag shoot, really. drag shoot release and we are down at Heathrow let's park it properly this time there is a taxiway let's not blow any tires though up, 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 up. follow the taxiway come on come on come on well we have arrived we have crossed the Atlantic and after parking for a bit, I will proceed directly to a flight once again over London because we'll be able to see more of it now that the sun is finally getting a little bit higher in the sky. And hopefully we will also head on... I don't see many free parking spaces at this terminal, is there? Okay, I don't know which hash mark I should be using, but this looks properly parked to me. Let's take a look at how much fuel we have left in terms of time. Keep in mind that we took off with three and a half hours, and it says we have an hour left, but based on it starting out with three and a half hours, that's, so that's two-sevenths of the tank, 28% of the tank we still have left. I think it could have made it from uh, New York to London without any problems with me flying it, in particular, with this payload weight. So yeah, I think that's good. And uh, with that, I will wait here for a little bit, pretend I'm refueling, and get back to flying in about half an hour to an hour. Okay guys, I'm actually in the middle of the flight from London to Venice, but unfortunately OBS crashed. And so we had hit Paris, we had passed by Frankfurt, Luxembourg, and we're over the Rhine right now, but OBS crashed, so it stopped capturing it, and the file, the part that I did capture of the recording is corrupt. So, I'm going to have to do this flight again, meaning I'll just upload the quick little uh, Atlantic crossing, and we'll leave it at that, and I'll restart this one as another video. Sorry about that, but uh, since I'm going to have to start this one from scratch, I guess we'll just do it uh, in greater detail and I won't uh, try and cram it into this video with the Atlantic Crossing. So, uh, we'll make it a separate thing, and with that, I'll, uh, I'll just leave it here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.